Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I guess I've been on a goblet streak. So I started with wet wood to try and explore the warping and and had staining here on the bottom that I had to uh, compensate for. Uh, new process, but I'm not very happy with the way it cracked and not. So again, green wood, apple again, but much smaller. Turned it, got, didn't have the red stain, the black stain, but it didn't since it wasn't as big, it was definitely not as dramatic on the warping. Uh, so to firm that up with the new process, I said, okay, I'll dry, turn it dry, but since it's dry, I don't have the staining issue, and still use a band clamp on the bottom for a mortise to turn it, and uh, this was successful, except that I got things a little out of order and had to add a step to it. So here we go, got to make sure I can do that start to finish, so here we go out of dry walnut again no issue with the staining we used a band clamp to make sure it doesn't blow apart when I'm clamping it and yes I think this is a nice goblet nice process so let's turn it off camera I rough turned this piece of dry walnut into a cylinder before dismounting the cylinder I need to cut a tenon on the bowl end of the goblet a little thin CA in a crack is an ounce of prevention then remove it from the centers and set up to grip it in a, to a chuck. The end of this wood needs trimming. Some wood split off while being rough turned, so now I need to round off the bowl portion a little more. Then trim an area smooth for my steady rest wheels. Now to drill the foot end. The steady rest is not strictly required yet since all drilling is entirely in line with the axis with pressure back to the chuck. I have had poor luck drilling with large Forstner bits. I am now drilling first with a 3 8 bit, then a 1 inch Forstner, then my 1 and 3 quarter inch Forstner. After all that, I can clean up with the underside of the foot. This does put some lateral pressure, but offset by the steady rest. I took a few moments to sand the underside and to apply shellac. Before I swap ends of the wood, I'm turning a little of the outside of the foot, primarily to mark the top of the foot and the intersection with the stem. Then clamp the outside of the foot mortise with a band clamp to prevent cracking later when mounted with an expansion hold. This is all ready for me to reverse the goblet into that foot mortise. After a quick touch to round off an area for the steady wrist wheels, I can remount the steady rest and get ready to drill the bowl portion of the same way that I've hollowed the foot. I could hollow the bowl with tools, but that would put a lot of lateral pressure on the wood and it would likely jump out of the chuck. I learned to progressively enlarge the hole from machinists who never seem to drill a hole to size all at once. This time I'm drilling about a two and a half inch deep, then with a round nose scraper, even out the bowl before sanding and finishing the interior.
That crack has showed up again. I applied more CA and allowed it to dry. No steady rest right now since I have padded the live center with a rubber stopper. Then measure the depth of the bowl and transfer the depth to the exterior. A parting cut preserves the mark despite wood removal. Then start shaping the exterior of the bowl portion, only removing stem wood as I need excess. There is plenty of wood to for support. I am swapping between my bowl gouge, spindle gouge, and skew. The bowl gouge for heavy wood removal, spindle gouge for my precise removal and shaping, and skew for the final smooth surface. As I approach the foot portion, I am reminded that the band clamp is a hazard that I do not want to encounter with my hands. I shield it with duct tape, but also ensure my hands stay outside of my tool rest. I decide to include a small bead on the stem, then continue working toward the foot. With a goblet of this size, I decide that a quarter inch stem is as far as I dare go. I am noticing that the goblet has the potential for a significant twist since the foot is anchored. Had I reduced the stem diameter too early before working the top half of the stem, this goblet would not survive. After sanding the goblet, I can apply shellac and rub it in. The walnut is pretty, and I like how this goblet is turning out. This goblet is larger than last week's goblet. Both were from dry wood. I like this process, since I do not have to fuss with the foot when the rest of the goblet is complete. The only risk is the band clamp, but that is manageable. I also think goblets are more successful when I use a steady rest. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running and even on these smaller items. A face shield saved my life and that is why I keep harping on this topic. And it can save yours, but only if you use it. I'll see you again next week with another wood turning video.